Well, after Indonesia and China, Singapore and Australia have also grounded the operations of all Boeing 737 MAX 8 jets temporarily. So as things stand, 25 airlines across 12 countries will not fly this aircraft. Now, the move comes after the aircraft suffered a second fatal crash within a span of four months. 157 people were killed on Sunday when an Ethiopian Airlines Boeing 7 MAX 8 jet crashed soon after takeoff. The incident is reminiscent of yet another tragedy that took place on the 29th of October 2018 when 189 people died in a Lion Air jet crash in Indonesia. Now, back home in India, the aviation regulator has not grounded the Boeing 737 MAX 8 aircraft just yet, but has issued additional safety instructions. The US and Europe have also not grounded these just jets just yet. In fact, they have given the airworthiness certification to the Boeing 737 MAX 8. My colleague Anu Sharma has been tracking this story closely. She joins us now with the details. Anu, explain to us how the aftermath of this Ethiopian Airlines crash has played out across the world and how Boeing is responding. A lot of flight cancellations and rescheduling is set to take place globally. As many as 25 airlines across 12 nations have temporarily grounded 143 MAX 8 aircraft until they receive further information from Boeing or the aviation regulator from the US FAA in this regard. This includes as many as 96 planes from the Chinese airlines, 11 from Indonesia and also from Brazil, Argentina among others. Now Singapore, which is a major aviation hub, and Australia have temporarily banned Boeing 737 MAX family aircraft from flying into or out of their countries. It is for the first time since Monday that countries have taken to not only grounding but also keeping their airspace free of MAX planes. Airlines such as Cayman Airways, Silk Air, among others, have also suspended MAX 8 operations, including Thai uh, Lion Air, Shadong Airlines, etc. Uh, on the domestic front, DGCA has ordered additional measures in terms of training requirements for crew of 737 MAX, more engineering maintenance checks, and has asked uh, DGCA and Jet Airways to ensure that commanders need to have 1,000 hours of flying, ex flying experience on a MAX aircraft, co-pilots need to have 500 hours of flying experience on a MAX aircraft. Now, while uh, five of these planes of Jet Airways are grounded due to non-payment of dues to lessors, 12 of these planes are with SpiceJet and they are active. Now, SpiceJet today has said in a statement that it believes that MAX is a highly sophisticated aircraft and it is uh, continuously engaged with DGCA and Boeing in this matter. Now, Boeing uh, is expected to come up with some kind of design changes in the MAX fleet uh, and will also improve uh, the software in the aircraft by April. But so far, both uh, DGCA and Federal Aviation Administration have ruled out groundings uh, in this entire matter. Back to you. All right, Anu Sharma, appreciate you joining us to take us through what has transpired after that Ethiopian airline crash. To discuss this further, we're now joined by Satendra Pandey, aviation expert, Sanat Kaul, Chairman International Foundation for Aviation, Aerospace and Development, and Ajay Atane, editor, live from lounge.com. We'll also be joined by Mohan Ranganath, an air safety consultant, just a short while on the show. Gentlemen, appreciate you joining us here on the program. Sanat Kaul, if I could start by asking you, sir, and I think the question that most people are asking in in India is that we've seen 12 countries preemptively, uh, temporarily ban the use of the MAX 8 aircraft. Uh, why is it that the DGCA in India hasn't done so? Do you feel that the regulator ought to have preemptively taken this course of action? Uh, or do you believe that with the FAA still giving an airworthiness certification, with Europe also not asking for grounding of the MAX 737-8 uh, aircraft, uh, that the DGCA perhaps is right not to do so at this point in time? You know, there's a, it's a very difficult question to answer because so many countries have banned it. You get FAA, which is considered to be, you know, a very, very important uh, safety regulator has not done it, nor has Europe uh, done it. So I would leave it to the judgment of these people, and perhaps Mr. Ranganathan on your panel may be able to say something on it, uh, which is better because he's basically he's mm. a technical person, he's a pilot. Uh, but what I can say is that, look, yes. there is something wrong. It's, uh, I mean, Boeing is a first-class company. Max 737 Max is supposed to be a very uh, technically improved uh, aircraft 
uh, it has many advantages, it yeah. has long distance, it can save fuel and so on. So there's something wrong either in the pilot training or in a critical part of the mm. uh, aircraft, uh, which Boeing has to identify immediately. Uh, because it's, it, hmm. it's actually, I'm told, 30% of their source of uh, revenue. So it's a very important aircraft for them. And yes. two crashes in a short while is a very, very serious issue. Uh, in India, also, we have about 13 okay. with uh, Spice and 5 with Jet. Jet are, in any case, down because of other reasons, because of financial reasons. Grounded, yes. 13, aircraft, yes. Uh, 13 aircrafts have been grounded by Spice Jet. And as so I can make out around hmm. 380, 400 aircrafts are on order. So it's a very serious issue. Hmm. What's happening now? Just to recall that when A320 were ordered by Indian Airlines in yes. the year when Mr. VP Singh was the Prime Minister, and we had one crash in Bangalore, the entire fleet was grounded for nearly hmm. one year. Now, so but but they turned okay. out to be very good aircraft, you know. So so there can be a lack of training hmm. and anticipation by the pilots. Uh, India has said that only senior pilots mm. and senior commanders are going to fly them. So I don't know. It's a it's a serious issue. Boeing is a first class company. We can't doubt the company on its uh, credibility. But uh, yeah. what have they produced? And these uh, aircrafts are flying, but two accidents are just too much within a short span. And they're all at the just after takeoff. Okay. They, 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 yeah. So so there is a technical issue. Uh, that whether, is correct. Whether, it... it's a, whether it's engineering issue or a pilot training issue. Mm. And, and it's very serious. Well, there, there is an issue, sir, and I'll get to that in just a second. Uh, it is curious. I'll get to that in just a second. But I am being told that UK has also now decided to ground the Boeing MAX 7378 uh, uh, aircraft temporarily. So that is the latest in the line of 12 countries that has decided this uh, action pre preemptive and proactively to ban the Boeing 737. We'll get that information and more details out for you. But Satendra, just to pick up on the point that Mr. Call was making, the curious case of what is going on as far as the 737 MAX is concerned. Now, I'm basing what I'm asking you on the data that has been put out publicly by the FAA, uh, which is the U.S. Uh, uh, transport, uh, which is the regulator in the U.S. Now, it says external reports are drawing similarities between this accident and the Lion Air flight accident, which took place on the 29th of October in 2018. However, this investigation has just begun, and to date, we have not been provided data to draw any conclusion or take any actions. Fair enough. But it then also says, following the Lion Air Flight 610 accident, the FAA has completed these activities in support of continued operational safety of the fleet. It goes on to list five or six activities that it has uh, reacted to when it comes to Boeing's airworthiness. But then it goes on to say that ongoing oversight activities by the FAA include, and again, there are three or four different things, and they hope that this will in fact be done by April. Now, Given the fact that there seems to be an issue that has been identified, that Boeing is trying to fix it, the FAA acknowledges that. Boeing itself in its statement acknowledges it, saying it is important to note that the FAA is not mandating any further action at this time, but the pitch augmentation control law uh, will be uh, upgraded and put in place by the end of April. So would it not then make sense to wait till this upgrade is done and then take a call on what to do? Well, it is a perplexing situation because 12 countries, regulators in 12 countries have grounded the airplane. I mean, the UK grounded it as we were speaking. Yes. Uh, and, you know, even if you take the two accidents apart mm. and you take the argument for not enough data, you know, you've had two fatal crashes in a period of less than five weeks with 346 lives lost. I believe there's data enough where you have to take an abundance of caution. And the second point is, while the regulators, you know, those that have grounded it, yeah. it's uh, you know, black or white. Those that have not, I also believe it's a communication issue because you know, simply saying there's not enough data to warrant a grounding mm. is not enough because there have been two fatal crashes. And in the history of aviation, I don't believe we've had two crashes with a similar aircraft type you know, within a period of five weeks. Hmm. So that's what's driving the situation. And, you know, I maintain, and in aviation folks maintain, the primary fiduciary, fiduciary duty yeah. in aviation is safety. Yes. So safety first. 
safety first. Arjun, let me bring you in on this conversation now. Uh, there is a communication issue as well, as Satendra is pointing out, that while the regulators that have not grounded, for instance, the FA or the DGCA, are not telling you why they have chosen not to ground it. They're basically saying that on certain parameters, we've checked and we find that this is an airworthy aircraft. What do you believe is going to be the impact of this now as far as the ecosystem is concerned, uh, Ajay, and especially from a consumer's point of view? I mean, consumers are not, in fact, waiting for regulators around the world to take these calls. Uh, people are uh, looking at flight radar and all other available information. There is an aware consumer there demanding accountability. What is this now going to mean for the regulators around the world who have not grounded? So I think, uh, Shireen, you are very um, on the ball there where you say that uh, there's not enough communication coming out of there. Uh, there's not enough communication coming out of Boeing as well, you know, uh, apart from a very blandly written statement, Boeing has not... Uh, I know Boeing must be doing a lot of work uh, in the background and they don't have enough to share. Uh, but, you know, uh, there is a lot more that they could do in terms of Boeing could do what FAA could do and uh, DGCA and all the other hmm. uh, regulators and uh, airlines which are choosing to fly the planes could do at this point of time uh, to communicate about why they think uh, they're taking a certain decision uh, rather than just saying that the plane is believed to be airworthy. Of course, you know, uh, that is a very... Uh, uh, it's, it's a given that if a, if a thing flies, it should be uh, airworthy. And uh, having said that... In yeah, the airworthy, yes. Yeah, in, in, in the consumer's mind, I think what's going on at this point in time is, of course, uh, it's a simple uh, judgment, you know, they're putting two plus two together, and uh, whether mm -hmm. the reason of both the crashes is the same or not, uh, basically, at the uh, at this point in time, uh, what is common to both the crashes uh, is the fact that it's a Boeing manufactured 737 Max 8 aircraft in both the cases, and that's why. Eight. Uh, yes. Yeah, and and that is the reason why uh, the public is shying away from flying this aircraft. So I think airlines could do more at this point of time in terms of talking to their mm. customers and assuring them rather than just uh, holding the stick. I think. Uh, for instance, SpiceJet only communicated that it is a very sophisticated aircraft. What does that mean to the customer? Hmm. Nobody knows, you know. Uh, you need yeah. to talk to the customer. You need to assure the customer that uh, we're doing more at this point of time. Well, but, yeah. So, no, so, no, I, I get that, but I guess airlines also have only only limited information that's available at this yeah. point in time. Uh, uh, but I get the point that you're making on better communication. But Mr. Call, you know, since you raised the issue about uh, Boeing needs to identify what seems to be the problem, and once again, uh, since uh, the regulator, the FAA and the NTSB are saying let's not connect uh, lines air with uh, uh, the Ethiopian air crash because there isn't enough data or the investigations are still on, but... Post Lines Air, and I'm reading from the Boeing statement uh, on the 737 MAX software enhancement, it says, and I quote, for the past several months and in the aftermath of the Lion Air Flight 610, Boeing has been developing a flight control software enhancement for the 737 MAX designed to make an already safe aircraft even safer. So there has been the identification of a problem. Whether this is the same problem that has plagued the Ethiopian airline, we don't know. But a problem has been identified, and the rectification of that, we are given to understand, uh, should be in place by April. Uh, that is the estimation that Boeing has put in place. So given that, uh, should this... Uh, should this not have been a call that regulators take that let's first get everything in order before we take a call on whether this should fly? Mr. Call? Oh, you ask me. Well, I think uh, safety is a paramount uh, concern and I think, uh, yes, 12 countries have already declared and India should seriously consider. We only have about... Uh, uh, you know, not very many aircraft in, in, of, of this type. There are about, I think, a, a dozen aircrafts. So, uh, so it may be quite uh, possible to, you know, just ground them. I mean, there, there's a viability issue, but at the same time, the safety is paramount. So, so I don't see why hmm. India is lagging behind in not grounding these aircrafts. It can be done. It's not a big thing, and Boeing is going to be. Uh, no, they should. They should, as you said, communication is poor. The, the aircraft is good. The yeah. Aircraft is good. It's flying, but there mm. is some defect, some lack of training, yeah. something which happens on takeoff, 
that this has happened twice in five weeks time. So there is a right. good uh, reason for right. uh, uh, DGCA so India. Good, to good take, case. Yeah, to ground them. Yeah, yes. good case for DGCA to also take a similar action to to ground yeah, the aircraft. Right. Satyendra, yes, yes. you know. Uh, yeah. Uh, what is this going to mean now as far as the entire ecosystem is concerned uh, as this plays out and you know we we don't know what the implications will be when DGCA will finally take a call if at all it does decide to take that call but from an Indian perspective what will the implications be jet has five currently already grounded spice jet is uh, uh, flying 12 but not just the current uh, situation there's also an order book issue that we have to deal with what is this going to mean for the ecosystem so for uh, the India market, uh, like you said, uh, the two operators are Jet and Spice. Both have significant orders, you know, 205 for Spice, out of which 13 are flying, and another 210 odd for Jet. What's also important is how these aircraft are financed. Yeah. Uh, because most of the financing in the Indian market is being done via sale and leaseback. Mm. And regardless of how you look at the grounding, the liquidity on the aircraft is already being impacted. Right. Which means looking forward, your sale and leaseback premiums can go lower, which then turns into working capital and cash flow consequences. So, you know, with Spice continuing to fly this airplane, mm. you know, each of these airplanes will do maybe eight sectors a day. Yeah. So when you're looking at 13 aircraft, you're mm. looking at well over 100 flights a day. Mm. That said, you know, we've been talking about the regulator only grounding the airplane. Yeah. And airline can airlines also have preemptively go done ahead that. Yes, and airlines preemptively have preemptively do that. done that. Yes. And, you know, they, you know, depending on certain factors, they are compensated for it as long as they establish, you know, clear reasons why they did mm. it. Mm. So for the ecosystem, especially where SpiceJet is concerned, uh, you know, the grounding has impacts because this is also a more efficient airplane type right. and in the Indian market you know yeah. the lowest cost position wins mm. but that said you know we don't know how the compensation will play out right. but there will be compensation for sure there are several unanswered questions there uh, uh, Ajay I'll give you a final comment before we head into a break uh, uh, as a consumer and you know you talked about uh, the need for better communication both on the part of the regulator as well as the airline uh, as you see more countries sort of line up to temporarily ground this particular aircraft uh, you know what what do you now start to see in terms of uh, the Indian consumer seeking accountability so uh, I think the Indian consumer is uh, already trying to assess what aircraft they are on. Uh, that's not a new thing for them. But uh, at this point of time, I think uh, the least an airline could do, uh, for instance, SpiceJet or any other operator which is still operating these aircraft into India, is they could give the customer the choice of not uh, flying on the uh, 737 MAX, rather flying on another aircraft. Uh, you know, for uh, let's say a Spice Jet is operating a Delhi Bombay flight on the MAX and uh, another flight on the regular, the older 737s, they could uh, perhaps at least uh, give them a free uh, waiver or a chance to change to another flight if they're paranoid about uh, getting on the MAX aircraft. So that's the least mm. they could do. And uh, uh, I think that's a policy that uh, uh, should be established in place uh, if airlines are not able to ground their planes. Um, besides that, uh, you know, uh, there is really uh, not much, uh, given uh, SpiceJet is the only uh, operator in India of these uh, aircraft type, uh, again, I'll support yeah. uh, Satendra in the view yeah. that, uh, you know, uh, they, they could take a call on this issue and uh, uh, yeah. perhaps proactively ground their fleet. Uh, but uh, I don't see that happening, really. Uh, seeing the aircraft utilization, given it goes into... Uh, places like Hong Kong, uh, right. uh, which they won't be able to operate mm. with a regular uh, 737, the older 737s. Okay. Um, I, I don't think, okay. uh, unless there is a statutory requirement, they will uh, ground these aircraft. So All right. Uh, well, yeah. gentlemen, uh, for now, there is no statutory...
no statutory requirement in India or in the US. The UK has just uh, temporarily decided to also join the list of countries that has put a ban on the operation of the MAX 737. It's interesting though, countries like Australia, the local airlines don't operate the 737 uh, MAX 8, but they've actually said uh, that they don't want their airspace to be involved either. So that's a call that uh, the Australian regulator has taken. Joining us now is Mohan Ranganathan, an aviation safety consultant and former instructor pilot of the Boeing 737. Mohan Ranganathan, thanks very much for joining us. Just to pick up on the conversation that we have been having on the program, uh, you know, the FAA so far has continued with its airworthiness certification as far as the Boeing 737 MAX 8 is concerned. Uh, several regulators around the world still grappling with what they intend to do. So far, the FAA not grounding the aircraft, neither has the DGCA issued any instruction to ground the aircraft, but they have issued additional compliance measures. Given the fact that the investigation is still on, do you believe that this wait-and-see approach, this wait-and-see attitude being adopted by some regulators is prudent? Uh, not at all. If you see, uh, I don't know if you're aware, Australia has also uh, banned Max from the airspace a few hours back. Oman yes. has done it. And so you've got China, Singapore, uh, Oman, and Australia banning the Max from the airspace. And if you look at the circular mm. that the ECA has issued, the instructions, it's actually a mockery. It has definitely been uh, dictated to them by the airline. Because you just see, uh, read the mm. line and the wording of the thing about the experience. He says, uh, for flying the MAX, a PIC should have 1,000 hours. And uh, first officer, yes. 500 hours on NG aircraft. Now, he does not say 1,000 hours PIC. He says a PIC should have 1,000 hours. It could be on any aircraft. I mean, he hmm. he could be a zero-hour captain. He's a brand-new captain because you need 1,000 hours on type to get a command. So the way they have worded it, right. you can have a zero-hour captain on their max with a co-pilot who's got 500 hours on NG. It is a very clever spin, and hmm. it's actually very dangerous. You know, first of all, if you look can at you the... Can you explain, field, you know, for the, for the benefit of... For the benefit of the layperson, Mr. Ranganathan, if you can explain why you believe that this is a clever spin. And once again, let me read out what the DGCA notification says. The DGCA notification headed under the heading flight operations to ensure, number one, crew operating the B737 MAX aircraft have undergone training as advised in the directive issued by the DGCA dated the 3rd of December 2018. So this was in response to the Lion Air crash. Number two, the minimum experience level of the crew operating the B737 max aircraft to fly as PIC is a thousand hours and co-pilot is 500 hours on the Boeing 737 NG aircraft type in simple English what does this mean and why do you believe it's a clever spin okay if they had worded it as thousand hours PIC and then 500 hours co-pilot on the NG aircraft which means he should have thousand hours as a captain on the NG but the way they have worded They've just mm. said a PIC should have 1,000 hours and uh, co-pilot 500 hours on the NG. It means you can have you can fly as a co-pilot for 1,000 hours and be a zero-hour captain. You would have just got his command. See, it has been very cleverly worded okay. so that they can use any captain who has no experience with a 500-hour co-pilot, mm. which is a very, very dangerous spin by the DGCA. And I can take a bet it has been worded by SpiceJet. Well, that is your assertion, sir. I, I have no, uh, uh, no information to, to take on what you're pointing out at this point in time, so I'm not going to go down that route. But I do want to understand, since you uh, are somebody who has been a former instructor, pilot of the Boeing 737, and I'm going by statements that have been put out by Boeing. Uh, Boeing says for the past several months and in the aftermath of the Lion Air Flight 610, crash. Boeing has been developing a flight control software enhancement for the 737 MAX, which will be designed to make an already safe aircraft even safer. Now, the FAA uh, anticipates mandating the software enhancement with an airworthiness directive no later than April. So the problem seems to be this anti-stall system, which reported repeatedly, apparently, forces the plane's nose down. Now, the 
patch or the software upgrade that Boeing says it will install latest by April. Uh, do you believe that this is going to be enough? Now, to start with, they say they will install it by April, which means for the next 45 days, the max is unsafe because it doesn't have that software update. Do you understand? We've had two fatal crashes in four months. Mm. Now they are talking of the software upgrade latest by April. They don't say a date. They say latest by April. It could be 30th April. So it seems to be a very, mm. very dangerous ploy even by FAA to permit this. Now, yeah. if you look at the other enhancements which they are talking about, and you will see one of the things hmm. is training. Now, you cannot train a pilot unless you have a simulator which is programmed for that. And India does not have a simulator which has the MAX program. What is that circular hmm. of December which DGCA talks about is to simulate a runaway stab. And they are doing it at 5,000. This crash took place from 1,300 feet. And... It is a completely different mm. from a runaway stab, what is happening, you know? And I can tell you that if there is a stall warning due to an angle of attack sense of fault, close to the ground, mm. no pilot in the world would go for a stab trim runaway. He will first go for a stall recovery. And stall recovery requires sure. that you move the nose down. Now, if the... MCAS is moving the nose down. If the control column is also mm. being moved down, it will not stop the runaway step. And so, we, you know, it goes into a continuous 10 second nose down movement by the MCAS, and by which time it is too right. Now we, so it is something that it, these are contraindicators, and you have multiple failures, mm. which is not acceptable for safe flying. Okay. Uh, you know, you, you keep pointing out that the DGCA circular is cleverly, uh, cleverly spun together. But the fact of the matter, Mr. Ranganathan, is that the FAA so far uh, continues to allow the Boeing 737 MAX 8 to fly. It has just recertified its airworthiness uh, uh, certification. Uh, Europe has not asked for grounding yet. So the DGCA, sir, as a regulator, is not alone. Uh, even though you might question the additional compliance measures that have been put in place. But the DGCA certainly is not alone. No, but if you look at what M uh, FAA says, now all the simulators in U.S. have this MCAS feature in the simulator. So they have pilots who are trained for that particular maneuver. We don't have a single pilot who is trained for that maneuver. And a country like Australia, which has got one of the safest safety records, not U.S. Hmm. Australia has one of the safest safety records and they have banned the MAX. Not just flying, they banned it from the airspace. Singapore has also banned it from hmm. the airspace. So you've got a, uh, countries which are proactive in safety. You don't wait for a fatal accident okay. and then react. Now, if FAA is doing it okay. because they are trying See. to protect Boeing, that's why. Hmm. Okay, so uh, you believe that uh, the FAA is also going slow uh, on taking action because it involves a U.S. company and there are a lot of uh, uh, questions being raised on the geopolitics involving this particular incident as well. But uh, at this point in time, uh, the investigation is still underway and there has been no further development on that front. But these are the various statements that have come in from Boeing, from the FAA, the regulator in the U.S. and, of course, the DGCA, which has asked for additional compliance measures, but not grounding. Mohan Ranganathan, a pleasure. Thanks very much for joining us here on CNBC TV 18 with your thoughts. Thank you. With that, it is time for us to wrap up the CNBC TV 18 special conversation from all of us here. Goodbye. Many thanks for watching.